Okay. So we're coming out of the cross of planning in the human design terminology, we call it the cross of planning. And what that was designed for 411 years was that we actually took our authority and handed it over to these large organizations. And it was designed for that, right? So that now we're going through this quote unquote, great awakening, right? This new earth. And Mm -hmm. what it is, is reintegrating with the magic of this physical body, Mm -hmm. our psychology, the consciousness field, and how we do that is by reintegrating our decision making taking back our authority Mm -hmm. from these large organizations and these, you know, structures that they were designed to do this so that we could have this awakening. Mm -hmm. So for the next 411 years, that's our path to reintegrate decision-making, take back our authority, recognize that the physical body has this intelligence that we are, when the brain and the body are nourished correctly, Mm -hmm. like truly human beings can be unstoppable. Mm Hi, Leanne. Welcome to the Awaken Heart Podcast. Thank you, Nancy. I'm so happy to be here. I'm happy for you to hear. I am happy for you to be here as well. (laughs) Coming from Canada, it seems like from Canada, this podcast has a lot of affinity with some amazing people and light workers in Canada, and you're one of them. Yes. So we're going to talk about a really cool subject um, that is within all of us. It's called human design. And it's such a fascinating, it's such a fascinating thing how we all have this inside of us. And depending on our human design is how we can show up in the world and how we can maximize our potential. It's, it's a lot to take on, but I know a lot of people that were in the uh, human design field and they were just like, you know, making such huge strides in their life once they really understood their own potential that lied within it. So you, it seems like a lot of people, when they finally find that thing that helps them get over that cusp, you know, maybe they're working a job that isn't fulfilling to themselves. They're feeling the nudge to do something more or something happens in their life to shift them into this trajectory of, you know, awakening to the potential that is within themselves. And you had something that you had a lot of stress in your life Mm -hmm. and you adhered to a wake up call that led you to doing the work that you do now. Can you give our audience an idea of what kind of stresses you might've been dealing with and what shifted you into doing the work that you're doing now? I sure can. So it's, it's, it's a fun story now that I'm out of it and on the other side of it. Of course, but I, now that you're on the other side, go, going through, it's like, oh, yes, exactly. Why? exactly. <laughs> the, so I, I was actually a, um, a bank manager for a, a provincial, um, finance bank. And I'd done that for 10 years and being in the, you know, quote unquote, middle management, there's the pressure from the top and the pressure from the bottom. And you're trying to, you know, resolve everything in that, in that uh, space. And there was just this movement inside of me, the organization about three years prior to me leaving had indicated that they were going to be taking our old computer system and switching it into a new computer system. And I remember so, it was so clear. There was just this knowing inside of me that I was like, "Mm, I'm not going to be here when that new computer system goes live. But you know how you hear that intuitive hit and you're like, okay, you just kind of move on and you're doing your thing, (laughs) right? Yeah. And about, well, it was three years later when we had our quote unquote go live. And in that moment, I just, you know, had known that I was leaving. So about, I'm going to say two months prior to leaving the organization, I just had this moment as I was driving to work and I'm driving to work in my vehicle, driving down the highway, 120 kilometers an hour. And all of a sudden this heat welled up inside of me. And it was just a very brief second but I blacked out and I'm driving I'm like hold on a minute what is happening here I don't have time to be sick 
I can't do this. I got it. You know, I have all these things. I got it right. And it was, I get, I got to work and I was always before anybody else. So I just had this moment in my office and I'm like, mm, this is not right. This is not right that I am feeling this and under this amount of stress. So in that moment, I just knew I was leaving the bank. I made sure that my team was totally ready to go for their go live. Everybody was trained and I gave my notice and I allowed myself time to be on our cattle ranch just to decompress. The stress was so great. I just needed to decompress. So I allowed myself that space. And then when I was ready to step in, I actually typed into Google new age business mm -hmm. and human design showed up. Wow. There's so many that would have show, could have shown up and that was it. That was it. That was it. And it was like, oh, this is, this is interesting. I had kind of dabbled in astrology, didn't really know it, but had dabbled in it. And this popped up and I'm like, oh yeah, there was a big poll, but it wasn't the right website. So it was about a week later, another website popped up and it was the original creator of human design, Ra Uruhu. And it was his book that, that showed up for me. And I was like, oh, there it is. And I just, 10 years, I was in classes. I have been helping people um, understand their human design for the last 10 years. And I tried to quit as an entrepreneur. I've tried to quit a couple of times and it just keeps me in this space. It wants me to be here. So I'm here. Mm -hmm. And yeah. what was that thing that was wanting you, causing you to quit? Is it the self-doubt? Is it the fear or this? I'm not I, I think it's just the online game. It's mm. the online game. Oh God, that tell I was me like, about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I was like, man, this shouldn't be this hard. Yeah. And that was what was, and I was still in classes as well. So I jammed in a 30 year science in a very short period of time. I took multiple classes. So it just felt like a lot, right? And I'm a manifesting generator. One three profile. If any of your if any of your audience knows human design, like I have to go to the very depths of what it is that I'm learning so that I can master it. So I took every single class. And as I was doing that, trying to build the business and do it, it was a lot. But it just kept me, it just kept me in its grips and it's doesn't want to let me go. So <laughs> I'm still here. I'm still playing the online online game and I get to connect with people all over the world. So it it's very satisfying. And again, it's, you know, that space where I can recognize oh, there's frustration here. What am I trying to effort at? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. So I no longer effort. I just follow the satisfaction of that feeling inside of me. I'm a sacral manifesting generator. Mm -hmm. So it's all about that satisfaction. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you feel yeah. into it. Can you, for, so a lot of women, men mm -hmm. as well, that are listening to this, mm -hmm. they can understand because they're creating businesses of their own as well. And we yeah. have to be on that online space. And yes. can you just briefly explain, because I'm sure a lot of my listeners can understand how frustrating, what the frustrations are online that you're, when you're bringing a new business and um, how it can, you just want to quit because- of the online space, it can drive you crazy. So what are the, some of the things yeah. that you experienced? So what, when I look at my design, I, I don't have what we call the enterprise channel or the sales channel. Mm. I have PR, but I don't have the sales channel. And I don't, I don't think in a, in a quote unquote manipulative or persuasive way. Let's just put it that way. So the, the channel that I'm talking about is the 4426 from the spleen up to the, the ego or the heart center for any of your people that um, I'm looking follow at a human chart design. Now. <laughs> okay. And, and what it is, is it, it's all about this transmission aspect of being able to really um, navigate that space between manipulation and persuasion. And the online space for me, I feel has really gone down this path of manipulation versus really helping people and helping them move into the the, the aspect of transitioning their patterns because mm -hmm. that's really what enterprise is all about leaving those old patterns behind and moving into a new pattern so everybody wins mm -hmm. 
So that's the one aspect that it's not that I work on it. I just have to recognize it that I don't have to be manipulative. I can mm -hmm. just be myself. I have to remind myself of this still 10 years into this, knowing my design. I'm like, nope, I just have to be me. Because as I, as the, the, the deeper I go into who I am and stand in that, then the people that need to connect with me, that hear me along my uh, movement in life, they will be there. They mm -hmm. will... They will come into the coaching programs. They will come into the, the, you know, the mentorship. They'll just be there. Mm -hmm. Because in essence, you're aligning with the truth of who you are. And in, yes. on a vibratory level, you're going to align with those that are seeking you out. Whereas yep. you're not efforting in yes. it. And as we've seen on the online space, it keeps changing so much. I mean, yep. uh, my friend and I launched a business and we can't keep up with the videos, like it's changing the AI and all these fancy freaking videos. And there's a lot of manipulation yeah. on there. Hey, do this. A and lot. like, and they're having a lot of now anyone can create their own course or their eBooks or their content just from AI, but it really comes right. down to the person and what you bring to the table in truth is what's going to attract those people to you. So that's a very important thing. The, you know, aligning and not efforting in that space. So uh, so yeah. briefly, can you explain the key components in human design and how it works? Mm -hmm. I can. So th the system itself was, is born from ancient wisdom. So Western astrology, the Kabbalah tree of life, the Hindu chakra system, and the Chinese I Ching, and it, and it marries it with today's, um, like quantum physics mm -hmm. and biomechanics. And, and through this marriage of ancient and future wisdom, what it does is at the core, it really is a decision-making tool. And, and what it's asking us to do is to drop deeper into the intelligence of the physical body. So we talk about AI, we talk about, you know, all technology. If, if, if we, when we just pull back, we can see that science um, and technology is really trying to replicate the wisdom and the intelligence of the physical body and how our mind is connected to the consciousness field. Like we have this massive technology here. And when we pull back and start to witness how our conditioning tries to pull us down all these paths, but there's this deep wisdom inside of us. And when we drop into that, that's what human design is teaching us is that there's a wisdom deep inside our cellular structure to make decisions so that when we're walking along our pathway and navigating this particular 3D world that we're in, we can do it with more ease, with more grace, um, you know, with the sensations of success and peace and satisfaction versus frustration and anger and you know all of those negative emotions because the conditioned mind isn't running the show anymore it's the intelligence of of the mind body spirit walking mm -hmm. so it, it's 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 a really on the surface level it's about you know it's it's truly about decision making once you go deeper it's about leaning into the strengths and the the characteristics of who you are, what you're designed to represent. And then seeing those weaknesses, like for example, the 4426 that I don't have, seeing those weaknesses and going, you know what, I can hire that out. I can actually bring on consultants that can do this for me. Instead of trying to effort at the weakness, just standing in those strengths and moving from there. That is really what human design does for us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's like all those every teaching about how, you know, the universe is within yourself, that it yes. all starts within. If you want to change the world, you got to change yourself first. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, can you go over, I think they're called profiles. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. um, I know I'm a generator. Aren't there just a, like four or five, like, I know there's a manifester, there's generator. And what are the other ones? And can you briefly explain the characteristics? I know there's so much that goes into each characteristic, right. but briefly yeah. what each characteristic is. 
Sure. So I use the um, original teachings of Ra. So there's four types. We have our projectors. Uh, projectors are really designed to be guides. They are um, they are our advisors because what their superpower really is is they get to connect with the generators and manifesting generators. They get to connect with that energy field and see it and and really get good at asking that particular type, the generators and manifesting generators, really good questions so that they begin to um, operate correctly. And in order for that to happen, what the projector really desires from us is to be noticed and recognized and then invited in as those really prominent key advisors in our lives. Okay. So those projectors, once that invitation is there and they trust the intelligence of their body, they will know who to connect with. They will know that cor correct energy to connect with. Then we have our generators and our manifesting generators. This is the largest group of people and that's 70%. And what we are, because you're a generator, I'm a manifesting generator. What we're designed actually to do is we are designed to use our energy frequency to, to build and create and be really creative processes on this planet. But our thing is we are designed to respond. Hmm. So people need to request our energy. Okay. That might look like questions, uh, universe, the, the universe, the consciousness field, it's going to request that energy. Cause I see that, that big red square, that sacral center on, on the chart. I look at it like a, like a cosmic battery. Like we are, we have this energy field and then other people get to tap into it. We get to use it for ourselves, but other people get to also util utilize it and then guide it. So we're, we're these really creative energy fields, but we need to respond to, to where we're going to use our energy. Then we have our manifestors. Our manifestors, they are here to, um, they're also creative beings, but they're creative beings in a way where they have this um, auric field that's very, it's closed and repelling. Now that might sound negative, but what they're designed to do is they're actually designed to create spaces for the creativity. So they have this really strong energy field where they can move the resistance out of the way so that that creative moment can happen. They are what we call our initiators, okay? They're here to initiate, like I see them as Moses, right? They initiate that parting of the seas so that there can be this creative movement forward. So their role is to just open up these spaces for the rest of us to build and create and, and be guided in. And then we have our reflectors. Our reflectors are so interesting. What their whole superpower is, Nancy, is they are designed to really reflect back what's happening in our community, what's happening in our world. They are the cosmic mirrors that say, you know, we're on track here or we're not on track. They are designed to be initiated into communities or, you know, uh, board seats on, on organizations so that they can really reflect objectively. This is what I see and this is what's going on. So in a way, they kind of evaluate the community so that we can get like a clean report on like what's happening, what's going on. And they need to be initiated. They need to be brought into these spaces, asked, invited, and initiated into these spaces because they hold such great wisdom. Does that help? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Yeah, it does. I took all my little notes. So going to my charts, just so the people that are mm -hmm. listening and aren't looking at the video, I'm going to put a, a cap, you know, one of these uh, charts not mine particularly, but I'll put a sample one in just so you can get an idea of what we're talking about here. Um, so it looks like a spine, you know, going down. 
Mm-hmm. And, um, and there's all this like energy around it. And then there's like at the bottom and the left, are they always, are they always those colors? And then the red is in the middle where like your, your, uh, sacral energy is. So we've got this, like, looks like a spine with all these numbers in it. It looks like there's a lot to learn, but yes. man, it looks like you master the universe once you understand this. So going off of my chart, I've got the red, you know, the red sacral, what would you look at here? So I've got like, it's red and then there's the areas in white. And then there's numbers that are like, like colored in. Okay. So when I first look at a chart, it's, it's to recognize what is you and what isn't you. That's what design really, you know, it goes, once you understand your decision-making, then we want to go, okay, well, what is me? and What isn't, isn't me anything that is white in, in the chart, you're designed to interact with that energy from other people Mm. or through the transits. So they have all of these, you know, skills or strengths or energy field, and then you get to interact with them. So anything that's colored in, you know, this isn't a uh, religious process. Okay. But I see it as like, this is what the consciousness field is said, like, I want you to represent this. So anything that is activated by the planets, it's, this is yours to represent. These are your strengths. These are your attributes and other people are going to come to you for this energy. So for you, you have the sacral, the root and the spleen as the centers that are defined. So other people come into your energy field because they're like, oh, she, she brings me this safety. She has this real energy field that we can tap into. She's really creative. We can look at her and go, oh, hey, Nancy, you bring us this really interesting fuel and pressure for us to look at our own cycles in our life, to get really innovative, to look at our own individuality. You bring that energy. And you represent it. So the more individual, innovative, and the capacity for you to be healthy and well, and in this survival mode, I want to say, through that, you move through cycles in your life. You probably really notice cyclical energy in your life, right? Mm-hmm. So you can probably on almost on a calendar recognize I started this, I ended this, I started this, I ended this, these, these moments in your life that happen and other people are really interested in learning that from you. They want to know, like, how, how do you innovate? Like, what are the things that you innovate? How do you correct your own patterns? And because they see that that you're a great nurturer in this, you have these resources that just, you know, keep giving and keep giving. They want to understand that from you. So they come into your world and go, help me recognize this. And, and how can we work together so that you use your energy field and they use their energy Mm -hmm. field. Okay. And that, that noise that you just made, that's the sacral center. When the sacral center feels like, yep, you've totally tapped into me. You know who I am. Um, I agree with this. I, I, you know, I'm engaged in in this conversation. You'll hear that noise. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The head's nodding. For anybody that's on the audio, (laughs) Nancy's head is nodding. That's what that sacral energy, because we are designed to respond. And the intelligence of the body is indicating I'm engaged with this. Yep, there's energy here for this. If it wasn't engaged, it pushes back, it leans out. It's like, mm, 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 right? <laughs> there's like this head shake, like, no, you're totally not on the same page as me. Yeah, that's like my dating right? for the last 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, oh no. <laughs> there you go. That's mm-hmm. your sacral indicating, right? And it's, it's so profound. And once you can pull back and really witness it, uh, it's guiding you. It's been guiding you your whole life. And when you trust it, 
that is where magic starts to happen. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's wait to respond. When I pulled up this chart, I'm like, oh, okay, yes. in my own life, I'm being reactive to a lot of things, but just take a breath, wait, and then yes. use my energy. And that's where the power is. So, yeah. so going back to the colors and then the white areas are the, what I'm interacting in the world or how I respond mm -hmm. to the world. So mm -hmm. somebody else's chart where mine's all colored in, theirs might not be colored in, in those areas. Right. So they're responding to me, right? So they're connecting with you because okay. they want to understand your energy field. They're okay. going, Hey, like, what does it mean to be tenacious? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That 38, 28, that channel that you have. Okay. It, there's this tenacity to be individual. So it goes from the root center up to the spleen. And that tenacity helps you survive. That's how you get through. It It feels very individual. People go, mm, Nancy's kind of, you know, she's kind of weird. <laughs> she's really weird because she's individual. She wants to live life, you know, individually, not being in this conformity. Mm -hmm. And people are like, God, that's weird. But they want to find out about it. They get really curious about it. It's like, what is going on here? So they come into your world because they want to learn that. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then anything that's like, for example, the solar plex, the ego center, the identity center, the throat, the ajna, and the head center in your body graph, they're all undefined. So what you're going to learn, you're going to learn how to interact with emotions. You're going to go, hmm, I don't have to react to any of this. That's where the intelligence comes in. I can just watch the emotions of other people just come and go and ebb and flow, but I don't have to get pulled into that. You're going to learn about the material plane and the ego, meaning, you know, those people that can operate on the material plane, like with lots of humble activity, those that are really egotistical on the, on the material plane, you're learning about that. Okay. You get to see that witness that look at that in other people and then identity and direction in that G center. That's totally open. Mine is also like that. We're always like, hmm, I don't know what I want to do when I grow up. So it's interesting to interact with different people that are doing things that you don't do. So it, it you learn from them. You learn, ooh, how do they love themselves? What direction are they taking? Why are they going that way? These are all things that you get to tap into and watch and learn. In the throat center, you get to assimilate all of that individuality that you have and speak on that individuality. But your actions that you take are designed to come from that movement of the sacral, that engagement, okay? And then the head center and the ajna center being undefined, what you're learning there so deeply, Dancy, is you're learning, what should I be focusing on? What kind of concept is like floating through my mind here? So you get to learn so much about how the mind actually operates, Right. And then you get really curious about it and go, oh, OK, I keep having this thought over and over and over and over. Why am I having that thought over and over and over and over? What do I need to learn from that? So you get to learn your mind and then interact with other people that have a very fixed way of thinking. Right. And when they have a fixed way of thinking, you're like, oh, it's really hard to change their mind. You don't have to change their mind. Just get curious about how do they actually think? right? Watching them, either they're really logical or they're really um, caught up in stories. And then you just get to watch it. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's becoming an observer to your thoughts, mm -hmm. an observer to the people around you, the actions around you. So in that regards, what in, in human design and what you just explained, a lot of people get triggered by other people. What are the yep. triggers if we're responding to other pe people? What are the triggers in this, this uh, understanding of human design? Mostly the triggers are coming from us trying to be something that we're not. And then that shows up in our lives. It mirrors to us. 
right? And then we go internally and we try to <laughs> motivate ourselves through negative self-talk, creates that reaction. People are triggering us. So what design does is it says, hold on a minute. We do not need to be quote unquote triggered. We just have to see it and then recognize what is that emotion that's going through us? What happened that that emotion went through us? And you teach this, right? This is, you know, this is the whole gig. It's mm -hmm. emotional intelligence. That every thought that we have, there's what, 80 to 150 thoughts, a thousand thoughts that go through our mind every day. Probably like maybe 10 of those are for us. So the witnessing and the, dis the, the, the discernment that's key for human design. It's the discernment process. Ah, what am I, what am I interacting with here? And what do I need to learn from this? Why is this happening to me? What can I pull out of this? What is the wisdom here? So we're going to feel those things, but as you walk along, along your pathway, you start to recognize, oh, that isn't me. They're just representing that. I don't need to be that. I can just be me and interact with that. Mm -hmm. Does that kind of? Mm -hmm. Yes, it does. Yeah. So going back to my family stuff, mm -hmm. <laughs> my sister, mm -hmm. she has zero emotional intelligence, like dealing with someone that has zero, just doesn't know how to handle her emotions. She's just all over the place. I've tried to help her. Right. recognize it, but she just doesn't. So anything that I try to, it's, it's like shining on the light, like waking someone up and shining a light in their face, but they're not ready to wake up or no. see. Yeah. So I have been extremely, I try not to be reactive, but I've been really reactive to a lot of things that are happening. Yes. So in essence, in the way to deal with someone that's emotionally uh, unintelligent or whatever is coming at me, yes. is just to pull back, yeah. become a witness yeah. and observe. Yeah. And don't yeah. try to change just like, Oh, huh. Okay. This is interesting. Okay. What is this response coming up in me? Why am I feeling this way? Yeah. And just pulling out. Got it. So, so if I look at your like particular, like your, the solar plexus in your design, you have the 22 and the six that are, they're called dormant gates. Okay. There's a deep wisdom there for you. The six is all about boundaries. This is your truth and transformation, okay? The six is designed for quote unquote conflict, okay? It's designed to see conflict through a new lens and then create boundaries and balance. So do you do any breath work? I have, but I haven't okay. done it consistently yet. I love okay. breath work. I go, whoo, who needs yes. ayahuasca? I can do breath work. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. That is the six. Okay. That six gate hay in there. It's the diaphragm. And what the diaphragm does when it expands and contracts and you play with that breath work, it creates a new pH in the blood, which then creates a new balance for your physical body. So anytime there's conflict, start to tap into your breath. Okay. And in my experience for, you know, the last 10 years, looking at that 22, the 22 is so very interesting. It's, it's your Mars. So it is, you know, the space where you're always maturing. The 22 has a deep, um, let's say grief involved in it. So you're cyclical with the 5342 at the bottom. There's these moments. And when you close the cycle, it feels like there's a grief. It feels like there's a loss. So the 22 is always allowing you to learn about how to grieve a cycle. So for example, with your sister, she may never um, move into emotional intelligence. She may not. Right. And it's about recognizing that you will go through a grief process around that. 
because there's an expectation and you know, I don't want to say that there's a hope, but there's this expectation that we all can mature and grow and become awake, but that's not true for everyone. Mm -hmm. Right. So that 22 is always teaching you that there's, there can be a grief in every cycle that you go through. And every time you master that grief, move through that grief, now you get to progress forward. Now there's this space where you can, you know, leave that behind and go into the next version mm -hmm. of who you are. Mm -hmm. So instead of trying to change, you're just accepting yes. as it is, because yeah. some people just will never get there. I mean, you can try and then it's like, okay. Right. Yeah. Mm. And, and if you have the wherewithal to be able to pull up her chart, right. Um, at some point and, and be able to recognize who is she, because most of the time when we're seeing reactive human beings is they don't know who they are. Mm. They're not relying on their strengths. So like when we're not using our muscles, they atrophy, right? So when we're not relying on the strengths of our human design, our decision-making, you know, the channels that are defined in there, any of the attributes, um, characteristics, when we don't rely on it, they start to atrophy. And then the conditioned mind pulls us into going, well, I should get better at this. So we start efforting at our weaknesses, which then our strengths continue to atrophy. So when we flip the script, like design asks us to, and says, just focus in on your strengths and build that consistency and that capacity and stand in that then all of a sudden we have the strength and the wherewithal to now interact with what we need to and not feel like we have to effort. So with your sister, it'd be interesting to see like, what's her type? What are her strengths? And then when you're interacting with her, you can have conversations to kind of pull her into those strengths, right? Pull her more into that decision-making. And she doesn't even need to be aware that you're doing that. Right. But the conversation is there so that all of a sudden that truth of who she is gets triggered versus the not self getting triggered and being in that reactive state. Now, all of a sudden you're pulling on those strengths and then she can start to interact with those strengths. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's the beauty of these mechanics mm -hmm. is that once you know it, now the conversation changes. Mm. Yeah. Mm, that's really powerful. Mm -hmm. Well, some things to definitely look at. I'm sure a lot of people are going to recognize these dynamics. So this is very helpful because we've got a holiday coming up where <laughs> yes. a lot of people over the holidays, especially Thanksgiving, they're, they're yes. going to families or back to like, you know, a household that might not have been very supportive or whatever dynamics were going on when they're growing up. So mm -hmm. <laughs> I hear yep. so many stories about this. So this can help a lot of people during the Thanksgiving, Christmas holidays. hundred percent. Yeah, for sure. Because the more we're centered, right? The more we trust ourselves, our decision-making, and the more we recognize, oh, we're actually designed to interact with some of these people, right? We're designed to interact with them mm -hmm. because we're designed to gain the wisdom whether that person is operating correctly or not, those are terminologies that human design uses, right? Because this is all mechanics. Whether they're operating correctly or not, that's not up to us to change it. But what we can do is go, what am I learning here? What do I see here? And then you, the conversation can change because now you start to converse and, and pull out those strengths and they can start to recognize it. Hmm. So everyone listening, I don't know if this is going to get out before Thanksgiving, but before Christmas. So listen and learn yeah. instead of being triggered, instead of wanting to throw the yes. gravy across the room or right. <laughs> the cranberries at someone's face, like listen and yeah. learn. Yeah. It's really, yeah. really great. And, and most of the time when like, when we can lean out of the reaction now we leave all those dense frequencies behind. 
right? Like greed and, uh, you know, jealousy and, and all those things that are really dense, we just start to leave them behind. They're, they're no longer interacting with us in our frequency. And when we're not triggered by it, <laughs> we're not lowering ourselves to all of that energy field. When we hold center and we trust ourselves, now our frequency goes up. So they either entrain to it or they just move away. Right? Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. It does. Yeah. And while you were saying that, it just made me think of my last relationship or some of the relationships, like my last relationship, he would say stuff that was like really hurtful or he'd say stuff and I wouldn't react to it. I would just, I'd have to always, I'd hear it. And then I'd have to think about it. And, um, I, and then I'd have to address it because, and then he was like, well, you don't, you know, didn't defend yourself because I did in the moment. I think about things afterwards in defense. Mm -hmm. I'm sure a lot of people mm -hmm. feel that the same way. It's like, did he really say that? Was that meant to, but then I would be afraid to address it and not talk about it. I just let it go by the wayside. I learned you have to talk about these things. Mm -hmm. mm. And, and again, I'm going to say like, if, if you have his design, then, then you get to really understand, ah, is this coming from his not self? His not self? Yeah. Like his, like the open centers, we call that the not self, the conditioned okay. aspect, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like uh, that open, that those open areas, all that white in the chart, that's like the, I see it as like the revolving door in a mall. That's where we go out and have experiences, but that's where people actually get to come in and have experiences with us, mm -hmm. right? So when we know the other design, when we know the other person's design, what we can do is start to go, oh, I am hearing the trauma. Maybe it's the trauma mm -hmm. of the emotions, right? Or the trauma of not knowing their own direction, mm -hmm. right? Maybe it's the trauma of not feeling safe in their life. Now, all of a sudden, you can hear the trauma and you don't have to interact with it. You can guide it in a different manner. You can pull it out of that trauma and start asking different questions. And through those different questions, then you're pulling out their strengths versus all the trauma. So he most likely those interactions are coming from a traumatic place that they had. They've never, ever processed that. And because they haven't processed that, they're living from this conditioned not self. Mm -hmm. So they they speak through that, trying to pull you down to that density. Right? And when you stand in your center and you stand in the strength, you can't you can't get pulled down into their game. Mm -hmm. Wow, this is just incredible. This is something that everyone needs to look because you how you're going to show up in the world, how you're going to relate to everyone each other is so a thousand times different than what, how we're relating now. And this is something yes. that's going to bring us into new earth because, mm -hmm. you know, we're going to recognize things without being triggered by them. We're going to really see a person in a whole different way. We're going to learn, yep. listen, and, um, we're actually going to be open to that person and really understanding them. I think that's so cool. Yes. So. Yep. Yep. And so I, I I just had information bump into me through Dr. Daniel Amen, A M E N. And he's a he's a psychologist, but he's like a like a, he calls himself a brain doctor. And he's done like 250,000 brain scans, okay? And he can see childhood trauma. There's a pattern wow. that shows up in the brain. There's holes that create are created from childhood trauma. He can see when um Someone bounces a soccer ball off their head. There may be their soccer players. There is a particular way that your brain, there's, there's a trauma that happens actually inside the brain. So most of what we're interacting with, we're actually interacting with unhealthy bodies and unhealthy brains. Mm -hmm. And through that unhealthiness, our minds aren't operating correctly. You know, the functions of our bodies, the chemicals, the hormones, um, you know, the way we activate uh, our, our breathing, all of that. Not, we're not healthy body wise. So in design, there's a, a deeper level of study, which is called primary health system. 
And and the creator, Ra Uruhu, is like, if we don't have a healthy brain and we don't have a healthy body, then all the rest of this is never going to work. So when I found like this Dr. Daniel uh, Amen bumped into me, I'm like, okay, there it is, is we're trying to fix our minds, but actually it's the brain and the body that isn't healthy. Once the brain can actually repair itself, because it can, and he does this every day with his clients, uh, you know, through nutrition and understanding ourselves. Once the brain can repair, then the mind can actually operate correctly. Mm -hmm. Right. So the mind, as far as conscious, because if you look at, open up someone's head and look at the brain, it's just this like big piece of like wavy right. meat, like, like hamburger right. yep. and we're healing it by the proper nutrition. Cause that's going to give you whatever you, you need inside it to work correctly. But then it's in yeah. the emotional body because it's all energetics, which is in your mind. Like, cause if you're going to pull out a thought, like, where are you going to go into the brain to find that thought? Or where are you going to, you know, find that trauma? You're going to look at the brain. You're not going to see it. Yeah. So does he see it where the trauma is with the holes? Does he see that as an electro, um, mm -hmm. either holes, but is it electric, like red or blue or so it's like the, it's the, it's the nervous system, right? And that's mm -hmm. like the, mm -hmm. you know, the epicenter of the, a part, the part of the nervous system besides our heart, which also has neurons, right? Because we're this electro, um, you know, electromagnetic thing walking around. And when the brain has holes in it and it has the trauma, then the neural pathways are not connecting. Mm -hmm. So when the mind has a thought, it can't actually connect correctly right? It keeps running this same pattern and trying to like, it's, it's running around these holes, right? Mm -hmm. Versus once the holes are filled in, now there's a different thought mm -hmm. pattern. Now the neural pathways can connect in different ways. Mm -hmm. And, and I think that's like, honestly, that's, you know, this is just my opinion, my observation through the food system, through the quote unquote, um, if you want to call it medical system, absolutely <laughs> right. Healthcare sick system, care. sick care, right? Sick care, right? Mm -hmm. Everything was just masked. Mm -hmm. Nothing's actually addressed. So once the physical body and the brain can repair, then we're unstoppable. Our psychology can repair, mm -hmm. right? But until that that aspect happens our psychology is is going to be off and we're going to be triggered because we we haven't been taught or, and then the neural pathways do they can't fire correctly mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right yeah and, and that's, that's really where loop. yeah and that's mm -hmm. where emotional intelligence comes from mm -hmm. is a nervous system mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah it's creating those new neural pathways bridges and yeah that's when, you know, if they don't create that, there's the loop. It just stays there. The little holes yes. stay there. And we're yeah. not being taught the proper ways now. Like I think, I mean, a lot of parents have gotten to see how their children are being educated and in indoctrination yes. camps and like yes. yep. feeding them all kinds of stuff, not to think for yourself, it's your right. fault. And it's like getting, yep. you know, put into all these little boxes of gender or like color. Right. And, uh, it's like, yeah. no, this needs yeah. to be taught at a very, like a very young level. And what's great nowadays is because of what's happened over the last couple of years and seeing how the education is, seeing how the medical system is, there's new pods being created where their parents are taking their children out of school and teaching them That's something right. like this and yes. teaching them to be empowered beings, how to meditate, how to, you know, be a powerful human creator. And, um, we're seeing a yes. lot of that now, and I hope more parents do that and more people get outside the system. I agree. So, I totally agree. Yeah. And, it, it, and, and, you know, I'll just, it was all designed for this. Okay. So we're coming out of the cross of planning in the human design terminology, we call it the cross of planning. And what that was designed for 411 years was that we actually took our authority and handed it over to these large organizations. And it was designed for that, right? So that now we're going through this quote unquote, great awakening, right? This new earth. And mm -hmm. what it is, is reintegrating with the magic of this physical body, mm -hmm. our psychology, the consciousness field, and how we do that is by reintegrating our decision-making, 
taking back our authority Mm -hmm. from these large organizations and these, you know, structures that they were designed to do this so that we could have this awakening. Mm -hmm. So for the next 411 years, that's our path to reintegrate decision-making, take back our authority, recognize that the physical body has this intelligence that we are, when when the brain and the body are nourished correctly, Mm -hmm. Like truly human beings can be unstoppable. Mm-hmm. And yeah. I've seen some of that with Joe Dispenza's work with the yes. heart, heart um, yes. the coherence and the brain, heart, the heart, mind coherence, and just seeing those wavelengths. Like, it's so fascinating. Like, oh my gosh, they're, they're having this out of body ex- otherworldly experience. And it's showing up in these graphs. It's showing up like his work. Is, I think it's absolutely incredible because then you have a tangible for what is actually happening. So I'm, I've just got chills all over my body. Just, just, uh, thinking about that. And, you know, and this all ties into that and that's, what's going to change the consciousness, a collective consciousness, because really a lot of people gave their authority over, uh, with this whole one size fits all medical intervention. That's people are waking up to like, what did I do? And some people are still buying into it, but then of course, you know, whatever they're interacting with just was what they have in this lifetime. So, uh, yeah, we've seen a lot happen over these last crazy years. And I think yes. it's going to continue getting crazier. Buckle up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <That's> a- <laughs> yeah. And, and when, when we're talking about this shift in, in the terminology, of human design from the cross of planning to the cross of the sleeping Phoenix, 2027 is, is like where, where the switch happens. Now, of course we know that energy wise, like there's still going to be the, the old energy and then the blending with the new energy. And we can see that, right. We can see that right now, those that are starting to awaken, see these things. And those that are still steeped in, in giving governments their authority. Mm-hmm. Right. And then there's the other ones that are like, no, nope, we're taking back our authority. So there's going to be this, you know, overlap for a while, but that's where we're moving. We're moving to this space where no, um, you know, the world economic forum and the UN and all these spaces that were, yeah, like they're, they're, they're trying there. And and you can see the desperation, right? Because they also recognize that the energy is changing. Mm -hmm. So they're really clamping down because it's like, Oh, we can't have all these human beings actually have authority. What are you talking about? Mm -hmm. Right. So Mm -hmm. it's like this cult that's operated for hundreds and hundreds of years. And, you know, there's, you hear about the ascension, you hear about raising the energy level on the planet. And that's absolutely what happened when you tune in. It's like, what the hell is going going on now? It just is such disarray, but that's on purpose to keep the the energies down. But people are popping awake like popcorn and they're the ones that are going to lead the way. Mm -hmm. I I totally see that. And you're, and yeah, like Joe Dispenza, like I'm surprised that he's actually still on YouTube, right? Mm -hmm. Because it's like, they don't want people to know that like, everything is inside of you. You can mm-hmm. repair everything inside mm-hmm. of you. hundred yeah. percent. And there's yeah. been others that were under attack over the last couple of years, like Bruce, when the, yes. that thing just happened, I was like, I'm not feeding in the collective consciousness of fear before I was even awakened to yes. what actually was going on in the 3d world where I was like, Oh my God, I'm in what the hell trying to warn the world. But um, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I listened to like Bruce Limpton. I listened to yes. like Luke Flaxen and then um, Greg Braden. So I understand yes. about the body and how powerful we were. That was the first person yes. I, when this came out, he, they, he explained, I think it was Bruce Lipton. No, it was uh, Greg Braden that did a whole presentation on what it was and what it does to the body and how consciousness can. So I'm like, I'm good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's so funny because Greg Braden actually has a book called Human Design. Oh, and it's yes. a totally like, it's totally like, you know, it's not this human design, but it is the human design. Mm-hmm. And it indicates like we are, we are powerful beyond imagination. Mm-hmm. And it was cool over that time. I don't know if you have a heart out at 12 because we know I don't. Okay. So we'll no, be wrapping I up don't. this soon. Just like one or two more questions. What was interesting during the time is like people that didn't speak up about it. They just mm-hmm. kind of, there's some that, you know, kind of like went with the narrative and started pushing the agenda. I'm like, Oh my God, I loved you, but now I can't pay attention to you anymore. Yes. But the ones that were speaking out, as we saw, it go really topsy turvy. And Bruce Lipton was one of them. He's like, what the hell? he, there's so much respect for her all the, these individuals yes. that, that talked about it, like, well, no, that's not how the body works. Epigenetics says this and, you that's know, right. yeah. So much respect to everyone like that. Yeah. So 
And there's a lot of charlatans, of course, in the self-development mm-hmm. world mm-hmm. as well. Mm-hmm. And you got to be able to use your discernment to, you know, yes. really follow, you don't follow anyone, but just get your information for those that really, really resonate you. And that helps from knowing who you are and human design will help with that. It totally will. Yeah. And, you know, I'll just throw in when you talk about epigenetics, so we can look at, um, we can look at design like that too. So anything that's uh, activated through the planets. So the definition, any gates, channels, centers in your design, that's like your DNA, RNA. That's what your, you know, that's that percentage of your DNA, RNA that you're like, yep, I, I know this, I can do this. Now the openness is like the epigenetics, right? That's where like we, our conditioning comes in. Mm-hmm. So we get to interact with that conditioning and discern, oh, this conditioning field is actually going to teach me something, or this conditioning field is not good for me. I'm walking away from this interaction. My sacral's pulling me out. I'm out. Right. Mm-hmm. So that's, you know, when we, when we go to that level and we look at that, just see the openness as there's potential there. There's potential to learn or there's potential to just disengage and walk away. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. And what you're talking about there, it just made me think of that medical in- intervention that was forced upon the masses with yes. the messenger R- yes. message messenger RNA. Yep. So you're putting this false, this thing inside yes. your body that is yes. going to, well, essentially override your humanness or your own human yeah. potential. So this thing that is inside many people right now, it's just overriding. It's just like, it's overriding a lot of people's innate immune system and their intelligence. So on purpose, yes. because we're moving on into this purpose. new cycle where people it's to keep, keep everyone down and we're seeing it people is. suffering from it right now. And, and we've only seen the tip of the iceberg right now, unfortunately, but people are awake to it. Yeah. I don't think, I yeah. know there's more coming at us, but much more people that had fallen for it the first time aren't falling for it again. So I don't think they have yeah. as much power over us as you know, what they came out with in the last couple of years. I, I totally agree. Yeah, And you know, it's, it, and then you look at our food system, right? Like they're trying to get us to just basically eat, eat processed bugs. food. Eat, yeah. 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 And appeal. Bugs. Appeal. Yeah. Come on now. Yeah. <laughs> Crushing exactly. like the, the local farmers, making it so hard for them yes. to um, farm and Bill Gates. Thank you very much. Like, <sighs> Like yeah. what he's doing is no good. So yeah, we have to pay attention to our foods and what more than ever fluoride, what's in our yes. water. They're trying, trying to put this RNA into our water or yes. what? what is it? Yeah. I'm like that MRNA, that is not going in my body. Mm-hmm. So yeah, we really have to pay attention now. Yeah, we totally do. Yeah. And as a cattle rancher here in Alberta, I've yeah. been watching that for eight years. Mm. I've been watching how they're, mm. they're, they're changing so the weather patterns. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Making it more difficult for the hay to grow. Mm-hmm. So then we cannot feed the cattle and mm-hmm. like the real big push to vaccinate all the cattle. And yeah. we, we don't do that either. We, oh, our cattle are totally clean. They get mm-hmm. nothing because it's like, mm, no, mm-hmm. our herd doesn't need that. No. But they're healthy. They're strong. No. And I've had to give up eating meat a lot. I'll go into a grocery store because it's so expensive for it to get the kind of beef that you might be raising. But I look at something, oh, here's, you know, I'd love to make a roast and here's one on sale. I'm like, I can't responsibly buy that. I can't buy that. Who knows what's in it, what they've done to the animals and all that stuff. So, I mean, there's a whole lot we can dive into here. Yes, I know. I know. (laughs) I can talk forever. Yeah. I know. And all I would say on that is do your best to connect with a local farmer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's, that's the key because unfortunately what most people are getting through uh, the grocery stores, it has all been altered. They might call it organic, Mm -mm. um, but uh, that's probably not a truth Mm -mm. or natural flavoring. And that's right. Like what we have in our foods is banned in like 30 countries. Like that's right. So much stuff. I don't glyphosate was another thing that was happening. It's just craziness, but we have a lot, lot of local farmers around here. We had a farmer's market, not anymore, but might pay a little more, but your body's going to thank you for it. Yeah. And, and yeah. you can actually eat less mm-hmm. Yeah, because it it's actually better. nourishing your body mm-hmm. and your brain 
so that now once the brain and body are repaired, it's no longer craving the chemical stuff that's in the food that's creating the mm-hmm. craving. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. Yeah. Like I- we bear, like we don't eat that much food because mm-hmm. everything is, you know, it's clean. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so we don't have to eat that much. And if you think about in Europe where their food quality is a lot better, you just get this yes. like, especially the wee wee foams where you get these yes. little plates. You're like, okay, there's my little piece, but you're satisfied and you're satiated. Yes. Their refrigerators are tiny because they go yes. and buy fresh stuff every day. Their eggs are every sitting on day. shelves. So like, why is it on a shelf? Because it's fresh. Milk is on, on yes. the shelf. So we have a lot yep. to learn from that, even though that's we, getting we invaded do. as well. Yep. So, all right. Well, this has been such an... <laughs> such a awesome conversation. I'm just, I love listening to someone like yourself. I learned so much. I'm always for learning. I learned a lot from you. My audience has learned a lot for you. So if people nice. want to, anyone listening wants to dive in deeper and work with you, how can they get a hold of you? What's your best way to get a hold of you? And do you have any, um, I know everyone can go online and sign up for your email and get a, mm-hmm. a design human design yes. profile created. Yes. So can you yep. tell us a little bit? Sure. So uh, website is the best www.powerofself.ca because mm-hmm. I am I Canadian. So it is .ca and you can get your chart there. Um, if you want to learn human design and bring it into your own coaching program, I also have a human design self-study, which now includes a mentorship. So you can come in, we play with charts, we get really experienced at that so that you can go into your own coaching program or into your family or wherever it is and and know human design so deeply that you're not triggered anymore because Mm -hmm. you're in that centered space. I also have VIP coaching as well that I do where I help entrepreneurs build out their businesses uh, based off of their human design so that they're centered they're not like me wanting to quit, right? (laughs) Because you're coming from this centered space and you just build your entire business structure and your offers from your design. Mm. Okay. So I know I'm not supposed to in the marketing world, right? Give you more than one option, but I have more than one option. I have the VIP coaching and the self-study human design and the mentorship and, or you can just grab your chart just like Nancy did and, uh, just take a look at it and then start to play. Why wouldn't you give, it's taught to only give one offer. That's all, all the marketing tells you just keep everybody very siloed in one offer. And I'm like, Nope, I have Mm. lots of options. And they can also find me on YouTube, Nancy. Mm -hmm. I have like, Oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. I have like, I don't know how many videos on there and you can learn so much on so that much. because mm-hmm. that's what I do. <laughs> mm-hmm. I like to teach. I like to, I think that it is so important for us to, to be fully centered so that we can navigate this chaos. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cause you're giving, you're serving, you're giving, um, yeah. you're serving everybody by your YouTube, like giving for yes. free. And yes. then uh, you give so much like the free charts and and then, you know, they can dive in deeper with your work here. And yes. I've made notes yeah. of my, myself. I'm going to be looking up your programs. <laughs> Seriously. Awesome. Awesome. Yes. So it's been wonderful having you on. I have one last question that I ask yes. all my guests. And yes. what does that mean for you to live with an awakened heart? It really is uh, allowing my values and being fully satisfied. So I'm an introvert. I like to be able to be on my farm and hang out with my cows and my dog and my husband. And that's really important to me. And that awakens my heart. When Mm. I can walk out and just pet my cows and hang out with them, I know that the world is okay Mm -hmm. because I'm okay. Mm. Mm. Yeah. I love that. And it's simplicity. Yes. Hanging with your cows. Hang with your cows. Mine is I walk out into nature, go to the trails and hang out with my cat. So there you go. Yeah. And yeah. I think it's so important. We we got away from that. And like my cows and the birds that are here mm-hmm. eating and my mm-hmm. dog and my cats, like they don't know about the chaos. Mm-hmm. They're just like, nope, let's just hang out and be in a space of love. So isn't that interesting? We always hear about nature, how it's our greatest teacher, because literally if you walk outside, look at your animals and, and, or go on a walk or look at the trees, it just is. And they are, they have just, it's just natural the way they 
forest for food, the way they, you know, they, they get the sun for their leaves. It's a beautiful yeah. thing. We can learn a lot. It is beautiful. Return to our own inherent nature. Yes. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I'm just throwing an example here. So this spring, there was lots of fires around us, lots of forest fires. And of course, there's all the fear mongering from the news and the, you know, the people in charge, right? Just total fear mongering. And I just looked at my cows and they're all hanging mm -hmm. out, chewing their cud. They're like, eh, we're not scared. We're not mm -hmm. worried. The birds were still here eating out of the feeders. I'm like, I have nothing to fear. Mm -hmm. Once they show me that there's something to fear, then we'll look at that. Mm -hmm. But they're like, nope, they were totally cool. Everything was cool. So when we use that as a gauge instead of the news and the fear mongering, totally different story. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that just made me think of something real quick. I remember in my old condo when I lived in Sherman Oaks, I watched The Grudge by myself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I had stairs that went up to my bedroom. You know that. Yeah. <laughs> Stairs up to my bedroom. At that time, I had four cats. Yes, I'm a cat lady. I had four cats because I had a huge place. So I'm like, okay, all right. That wasn't the best thing to watch just before I went to go to bed. <laughs> but okay, my cats, I'm going to bring them in here. I'm going to close the door. And unless they freak out, I'm fine. If they start freaking out, I'm just going to run and jump off that balcony. I'm fine. Yes, yes, exactly. <laughs> they they yeah. are... They are light years ahead of mm -hmm. our own consciousness. Like mm -hmm. we can trick ourselves and hypnotize ourselves into any kind of fear. They're like, nope, you can't do that to me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. mm. Well, this has been such an inspiring, wonderful conversation. I, um, I'm i excited for all, all that are listening to find Leanne yes. and uh, work with her and dive into the human design. It's, yes. it's inherent. It's in all of us. And yes. you know, when we do the whole world's going to change our world changes and the whole world around us changes. So thank That's you, right. Leanne so much thank for you, joining Nancy. us today. Great conversation. Great conversation. Thank, thank you. you. You have a wonderful day. You too.